This is the project started by government of Karnataka and it is a pioneer in terms of leveraging the information and communication technology. So the citizens today are able to enjoy the best of the best services and that too at the lowest cost possible. Every citizen will come to know what is this application, where this application is currently standing and what are all the facilities that are being provided to him at any given point of time. Good morning and welcome to the session one, chapter one, unit three, fourth semester BBA, good governance in India, where we're going to speak about the Sakala project. Most important thing about the Sakala project is that this is the project started by government of Karnataka and it is a pioneer in terms of leveraging the information and communication technology, which means to say that for the reason of better governance, it has been taken on to the forefront of implementation on electronic governance mode, which is one of the biggest initiatives in our country. The Department of the Personal and Administrative Reforms, particularly to the e-governance, took this into inception in the year 2003, and they have been facilitating the acceleration of IT-enabled services to the various departments. The department has also ensured various delivery of services starting from G to C, government to citizen, government to business, government to the employee services effectively through the implementation of various e-services. So Sakala is not just a project, but it is the prime initiative taken by the government of Karnataka to enable the full utility value of technology and bring in the best in terms of administration, provide people with all the instant services and to ensure there is a transparency, reliability in terms of making this particular project happen. Followed by what is the Sakala scheme? As for the Department of the Personal and Administrative Reforms, they have been taking up a smart governance project where the Directorate of Electronic Delivery of Citizens, that is the EDCS and the Karnataka state government have with the Sensing Applications Center has been the front runner in delivering various e-services. The department has been very successful in the implementation of projects like that of Aadhaar, National Academic Depository, the DigiLocker, Right to Information, Open Government Data through the initiatives of Karnataka government. So what we see here is that Sakala is not just a project, but it is an access given to every citizen of Karnataka, which will be enabling them to understand about how the government works, where are all the functionary items that we need to look into. Now, Sakala is going to be one of the biggest success. Why? Because this is trying to make the citizen understand, analyze, apply all the possible schemes in terms of how IT can be harnessed, how IT can be taken forward, and how IT can become one of the biggest success in terms of understanding the entire facility of communications and technology. So definitely Sakala is not just a project that we need to talk about, but this is more about something where you are trying to make people understand about the importance of the technology altogether. Now, when you look into projects like Aadhaar or the National Academy Depository, the DigiLocker, Right to Information, all those kind of facilities that we are talking about, this is a very, very big project that we are talking, that we are taking in form altogether. Why? Because we believe that in the long run, this project has actually been able to transform and take forward most of the services to the doorstep of the citizens. So the citizens today are able to enjoy the best of the best services and that too at the lowest cost possible. So you would see here that the combination of enabling citizens as well as the government coming forward is the biggest initiative that anybody can talk about today in terms of the growth and service factor altogether. Followed by, what is the Sakala Act in Karnataka? Providing services within the stipulated time, which is very, very important. Why? Because the timing factor is what 
anybody would look into. The stipulated time that is shall start from the date when it's required. The application for the scheduled service is submitted to the designated officer or to a person subordinate to him authorized to receive the application in such a manner it might be prescribed and it shall be duly acknowledged. So the most important thing that you need to understand here is that moment you submit an application regarding a need for a particular service that has to be done within that stipulated time period. There is a person who is authorized to collect that particular application and that person has to take forward in terms of understanding how this application works, how it needs to be submitted, within what time it has to be returned back. All those things have to be given in terms of an acknowledgement to the citizen. Monitoring the status of the application, every citizen who have applied for any citizen related services shall be provided with an application number concerned with the public authority, which means that citizen will have the tracking facility, which is very, very important to obtain at this given point of time. So in accordance to such a procedure may be prescribed, which means to say that now when you have the tracking facility, every citizen will definitely come to know what is happening with his application, where the application is tracked, how they have been taken forward, what are all the different factors that are being looked into and all those things that have been told here. So that is why this is something which is very, very important for all of us to understand as in, in terms of the accordance in of the facility that has been given by the SACLA. So every citizen will come to know what is his application, where his application is currently standing and what are all the facilities that have been provided to him at any given point of time. Now, what is the act again as we concentrate? The concentration is on the e-governance of services through the mutual factor that we are talking about, which means every government department will be interconnected in the Sakala project. Now, all the government offices will have some kind of authority connection in terms of understanding the various parameters that are going through in terms of the application that we are trying to talk about. The most interesting factor here is that the mutual understanding is important because to deliver the respective citizen related problem. Now, let's say we are going to talk about a water service which has not been properly taken care of, a water supply or an electricity. That means it is not only their department, there might be multiple departments that are involved in that case and they need to form a team and deliver it in accordance. Suppose they don't deliver the project, they don't take care of the project on time then automatically it leads into a very big problem. Why? Because the government there would start going back and asking for this factor. Have they been able to solve it? The citizen will start now tracking and it has to be done within that stipulated time period altogether. That's where e-governance is gaining popularity to a large amount, to a large traction. Why? Because e-governance is actually helping the citizen to track and get his work done within that stipulated time period. Now, compensatory cost to the citizen. If the citizen has applied for such a services, he or she shall be entitled to get a compensatory cost in according to the provisions of the act or the rules that have been made because in case if there is a delay in the services there is a default in the services we have not been able to give the citizen what he wants on the given time period particularly that means the citizen is enabling himself to get a compensatory amount the government has to pay a penalty to the citizen saying that we need to take this we have to give this particular thing to the citizen because we have delayed his service now liability to pay the compensatory cost every designated officer or a subordinate who fails to deliver the citizen related services to the particular citizen within stipulated time shall be liable to pay a compensation at the rate of 20 rupees per day 
for a period of delay and a maximum of 500 rupees in the application aggregate if then no ban or restriction from the government comes into picture. Now look at that. It's not about just the money that we are talking about, but it is about the factor that suppose the citizen is not able to get what he wants on time. That means this triggers the alarm for getting into a penalty zone. And that goes at the rate of 20 rupees per day and it goes up to 500 rupees, which means beyond that 500 rupees, there can be a ban that can be created and that entire service can get completely erupted away from the government. So it is very, very important to say here that the person has to be on time and deliver it. So this becomes very, very important for all of us to understand and take it forward in terms of the development. Now, Appointment of a competent officer, the government shall appoint by notification of an officer below the rank of group B or C. The government officer will in turn take the equivalent rank and authority as a competent officer to impose the cost against the designated officer as a public servant and he has to be competent enough in delivering the services as prescribed in the given time frame altogether. Suppose the officer does not do it. Suppose the officer is not able to go forward in terms of maintaining the contract or the act. The government has got all rights to suspend the officer and take further actions against him. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe in this session, we have heard about this project called a Sakala, which is very, very important. And this is a very important model as we are talking about the e-governance project. In the upcoming sessions, we would be talking about Bhumi, Kisan and other kinds of e-governance project, which has been promoted by the government of India. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.